cataractcoach.com. Let's help this novice surgeon learn phaco chop. We'll fix the hand position, the instruments, and the eye not being in primary. So this is a resident surgeon operating with professor guidance, and we've skipped ahead to doing the capsorexis. You can see the pupil is moderately dilated, not the best. Tripan blue dye was used to stain the anterior lens capsule, and now a capsorexis is being performed. Now, good part here is we want to make a generous capsorexis. So at this point, the resident's making this capsorexis bigger than the pupil. This is a very important technique and skill to learn. So this pupil maybe is about uh, four millimeters in one dimension, maybe a little bit more in the other. And you want to have a five millimeter capsorexis, so you may have to make this rexis under the iris for part of this capsorexis. We did put in more dispersive viscoelastic to help protect the cornea, but also to expand the space there and do some viscomedriasis. And now the rex is still being performed under the iris, which I like, which is great. Good technique here. Keeping the eye in primary. Look, more viscoelastic going in. That's okay. You're in the learning stages. Use as much viscoelastic as you need. Forceps going in one more time. Grabbing the capsule. And we're going to complete the capsule rex. It's very important for these intracapsular maneuvers such as divide and conquer, stop and chop, phaco chop, we want to have, we need to have an intact capsular rexus. Otherwise, the forces that are used within the capsular bag can cause an area that's radialized to extend peripherally. So now with the capsular rexus performed, time for some hydro dissection. And so that's going to be balanced salt solution on the blood cannula. If we're going to chop this in the bag, of course, we don't want to prolapse it. We want to leave it in the bag. Adjusting Adjustment of the light here on the microscope can allow us to have a better red reflex. So it looks like the coaxial lighting has been turned on, as well as the regular microscope lighting. And it's time for the bounce salt solution. So in doing this hydro dissection, nice and gentle. This is not a forceful technique. So if you want a fluid wave going across, we don't want to be forceful. It doesn't, I want to rotate it right away. So that's excellent. So just one area of hydrodissection allowed the nucleus to rotate. More dispersive viscoelastic going in there to protect the central corneal endothelium. And now it's time for the phaco probe. So chopper here on the left hand, this looks like a Nagahara type. And we're going to try initially to do a, a chop right down the middle. Sometimes it's easier if we can just use a 27 gauge uh, blunt cannula and our chopper to actually achieve a chop right down the middle there. And that's pretty much separated the lens into two halves. And that's going to make it a lot easier for the resident who's just still learning to do some phaco chop and get these nuclear halves out of the capsule bag. So here you go, FACO probe. We're going to have a high flow setting here, at least 40 cc's a minute, high vacuum, at least 400 millimeters of mercury, and a reasonable infusion pressure, either higher bottle height or higher infusion directly set pressure in order to uh, balance out the fluidic. So separating those two halves, it's a pretty good separation there. Looks reasonable. And then Time to bring the pieces up. So we're going to buzz in with the phaco probe. That looks a little shallow, not too bad. Chopper goes around the equator. Uh, see what happened? The phaco probe keeps coming off of the nuclear piece. So very important here that we want to have a good purchase. You have to occlude the phaco tip with this peristaltic machine in order to build the high vacuum. So buzz in again to the nuclear pieces. Now... Maybe they weren't fully separated, so the resin's going to go back and try to do more separation. And you can see we've addressed the issues of the way the instruments are held. Now they're held in a much more natural position. We've also addressed the issue of keeping the eye in primary. The resin's doing a fantastic job here. So that chop worked. Why did it work? It worked because the cataract piece was being held very securely by the phaco probe. Let's watch again. So rotating the nucleus, buzz in, good, deep buzz, chop around the equator, nice, and it can chop the piece. 
So doing a pretty good job of keeping that primary. This is really quite good. Bring these nuclear pieces up and just taking our time here. When you're in the learning stages, do not be concerned about having a fast case. That's a mistake. Have an efficient case, don't waste any time. But your goal is to have a very controlled case. In the learning stages, it's much more important to control everything. So that means keeping that primary, which is a little out of primary at the moment. Not torquing or distorting the incisions. So here, buzz into the nucleus. Beautiful. Nope. Buzz in to clue the tip. Not quite occluded still. So you see the chop won't work. Tip's not occluded. So buzz in, bring the pieces up. Now the whole nucleus is flipped over. You can see there's still some central attachments here of the pieces. And breaking that central zone will make it a lot easier. So slowly by slowly, removing this nucleus. So it wasn't a perfect chop case, of course. We're still in the early part of the learning curve. But I think a lot of the techniques are down, are understood quite well here. And we'll just take some practice. I'm most impressed that the three issues that this resident had before have all been resolved. And that was one, the holding of the instruments. You really want to hold the phaco probe like a pencil or a pen. Number two issue was the eye wasn't in primary the whole time, but in this case it was. So previously the resident tended to lift up on the incision and force the eye towards the nasal canthus, but that has since been resolved. And the other one um, is the hand positioning you want to position your hand so that you're having a, a support, whether your your small finger, your pinky finger, or your, your ring finger, against the patient's cheek or head or face in order to support things and keeping that appropriate pivoting technique in the incision. So cortex removal now with the coaxial IA probe. Removing this. Now, a lot of times it's easier to do a bimanual IA in these eyes that don't dilate so well. That'll give us a little bit more uh, reach for all 360 degrees under the capsular bag, uh, rexus edge. So I think we're gonna do that now. We're using this transformer eye handpiece. So switching over. You can see we also loosened the speculum a little bit. There was a little bit of a posterior pressure from the patient, causing that capsular bag to come forwards. You can also increase the infusion pressure on the machine. So here's the right hand is just the infusion now. The left hand with the small instrument, that's the aspiration. So going here, there we go, going here underneath the subincisional capsular rim and grabbing that cortex, it'll complete the case here. So very good case. Residents making good progress in the learning. The chop, there are a few good chops in there. And this is slowly but surely how we progress. So if you're early in the learning curve as well, please work with your mentors and learn FACO CHOP. Do not give up. And then this case here will proceed normally and the patient will have a beautiful outcome. Thank you for watching.